So, a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture, we had talked about different forms of PSK constellations and had seen how are different PSK constellations affected by noise. So, in this class, we will look at the reason. So, actually, if I draw this, then just some possible boundaries for these constellations from the last class. So, this, this, yeah. these are the possible boundaries for these constellations and anyway, we will come to how do we draw these boundaries slightly later, but uh, we want to discuss how does the number of points in a constellation affect uh, its uh, the effects of noise on it and uh, more general. So, we will in this lecture go back to the idea of signal spaces and use those to develop a more generalized theory for constellations and uh, then use it to analyze the effects of noise on various communication systems or various digital communication systems. So, QAM, before we talk about QAM, we will first talk about signal spaces in general. So, let consider two signals S1 T and S2 T defined over the signal space spanned by psi i T as S1 T equals summation S1 i i goes from 1 to n psi, psi i t S2 t equals i goes from 1 to n S2 i this. So, now we can also write given the order we can also express s1 as a vector s1 1 to s1 n transpose and s2 as s2 1 to s2 n transpose this. So, with that said let us try to define try to define the inner product of two signals. Let us try to define the inner product of two signals. And clearly since we defined the inner product of S1 T, S2 T as minus infinity to infinity. We have defined the inner product of uh, these two signals like this. We can equivalently write i goes from 1 to n. j goes from 1 to n or k because j we use as the square root of minus 1 summation i goes from 1 to n summation k goes from 1 to n s 1 i s 1 k conjugate psi I conjugate kt dt. Since uh, integration and summation are all linear operations, let me take the integral inside. I goes from 1 to n, k 
okay, goes from 1 to n s1 i s1 k conjugate psi i t psi k t k goes from 1 to n delta minus k equals summation i goes from 1 to n s1 i s sorry this is 2 this should be 2 this should be 2 this should be 2 this should be 2 s1 i s conjugate 2 k let's conjugate 2i this or this equals s2 hermitian s1 which equals the inner product of the vectors s2 and s1 given that psi i's form an orthonormal basis so with this now what does this mean physically to answer that let us look at the inner product of s1 t with itself so look at the inner product of dt this you can show that this equals summation i goes from 1 to n square which is norm square of s1 so this we know corresponds to energy of s1 this corresponds to the norm square of the vector s1 or the square of the length of s1 in the signal space this corresponds to the, the length of s1 in the signal space right so we have an idea that the energy of a signal g of a signal is proportional to the square of or actually it's equal to square of its length the square of its length in the signal space fine so we have uh, the first notion or uh, we have an a basic idea of signals or signal spaces that uh, the energy can be directly translated into the length of a signal so now with this let us state a few more properties of signals in signal spaces that signals follow triangle quality like vectors that is s1 t that is the energy of is less than or equal to the energy of this they follow the triangle in quality and with equality if s1 and s2 are parallel in the signal space
orthogonal space and they follow the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that is whole square is less than or equal to this fine so therefore they follow the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality and they follow the triangle inequality and like we can also write this as E1 plus E2 where E1 is the this is less, this is equal to E1 E2 E1 is the energy of S1 E2 is the energy of S2. We can also, as a side note, given a set of signals, we can form its underlying orthonormal basis using gram so we can form its orthonormal basis using gram schmidt orthogonalization that is uh, another thing fine so we have the idea of uh, signal spaces and uh, the ideas of energy and correlation in terms of signals and we have orthonormalization as well. So based on this now let us re-examine the signals in a constellation. So the idea is that the signals in a constellation are basically vector representations of signals. These are basically vector representations of signals, fine. So, if I look at, I now look at PSK signal, the constellation is A equals J0 J2 pi by M J4 pi by up till J2 by M minus 1 till by M this these are the possible signals this can be called as A1 will be called as a m minus one or a m a zero a m minus one so therefore in this case the energy of the mth constellation symbol is equal to norm of a m because all these are 1, so 1. This is the energy of the mth constellation symbol. Similarly, if I look at PSK, I get that the mth symbol is PM. The constellation is minus 2L plus 1, minus 2L plus 3, minus 2L or minus 1. I can do M as well but uh, for M symbols so minus 2M plus 1 or rather M plus 1 minus M plus 3 if it has M symbols has 
m even symbols minus m plus 3 minus 1 1 till m minus 3 and m minus 1 this so a m here is minus m plus this beast. This is how I define the mth symbol. So minus m plus 2m minus 1 when we reach the mth symbol. So this is minus m plus 1 a1 to am or if I small m goes from 1 to capital M. If small m goes from 0 to m minus 1 then it is minus m plus 2m plus 1. This is just how you define m. That's the only thing. So, pm if uh, m is even. Now, the question is what do we do with this or here the energy of the mth symbol is minus m plus this or this equals 2m minus m minus 1. 1 to m. So, this is how you define the energy of the mth symbol. So, here we see that in PSK the energy of the mth symbol is constant at 1, but uh, here it is changing. So, here we also define the idea of average energy. Average energy is 1 over m because there are m symbols. Summation i goes from 1 to n, 2m minus m minus 1 the whole square. You can uh, obviously solve this because this is a series. So, you can actually solve this as m i goes from 1 to m, m minus 1 minus or m plus 1 minus 2m whole square and uh, you can solve it using a plus b whole square and get an expression for the average energy that is uh, something else but uh, so that can be done that's actually done in class but uh, right now let's skip this this is how you will uh, try to get the average energy of a, a pam system so but the idea is that uh, communication systems or constellations constellation symbols also have associated energies. Constellation symbols also have associated energies. This is one idea that uh, we want to talk about. Now, let us talk about a general QAM constellation. So, or we see that that in a in a PAM. constellation are varying the amplitude of the transmitted symbol and in a PSK constellation are varying we are varying its phase so in one case we are varying the amplitude and in the other case we are varying its phase so for pm sm can be written as am with am taking some value and psk SM can be written as e to the power j theta. This is what we have right now or M goes from 1 to capital M. So, the question is then why cannot we vary both? So, a QAM constellation 
symbols from a QM constellation have both variable magnitude as well as a variable phase in general QM the symbol of a QM constellation looks like a m j small m both a variation in the magnitude as well as the as a variation in phase now this leads us to another question that uh, since the start of this discussion we have been talking about so this or equivalently a m cos theta m plus a m sin theta m j yes. or you can write uh, q m symbol in two ways as uh, a magnitude and phase or as uh, this so equals a or rather I can call it b i m plus j small m b q small m this so this is quadrature amplitude modulation quadrature amplitude modulation now the question becomes so you can generate QAM symbols like this but uh, this still does not answer our the basic question that we started with that uh, why does noise affect different uh, constellations differently or why is the same amount of noise affecting different PSK constellations differently so to answer that let us look at uh, the conditional distribution of noise so consider now generalized QAM constellation so we see that uh, both PAM and PSK can be considered special cases of QAM so now consider a generalized QAM constellation with the mth symbol given as SM consider a constellation whose mth symbol is given as SM or small a to maintain continuity with our so whose mth symbol is given as small a and then let this be transmitted and corrupted by additive white Gaussian noise of variance and not complex everything is complex valued all the symbols are complex valued so let this be corrupted by complex AWG you know, of variance and not so y equals am plus w where w is awgn so y given am given that i know am y will be distributed as a gaussian random variable with mean am and variance n naught or the probability density of y given am is 1 upon pi n naught e to the power minus y minus square by this beast this is natural so this is the probability density of y or this 
represents probability of probability density of the received signal taking a given value y this represents the probability density of the received signal taking a given value y fine so now we have this information what do we do with this how do we interpret this now we see that let me take a screenshot separate out just this part and paste it here this so let me take this and move it here now let us see or uh, let us try to interpret this so let me pick this up and let me paste these pictures here possibly what i'll do So, see that in all these cases the noise variance is fixed but uh, what is happening is as you are keep on adding more and more points around it. So, when we move from 2 to 4 what is happening is that this is here and I add a point here and I add another point here and uh, I generate these clouds corresponding to these two points. So, naturally the blue cloud I get overlapping clouds as seen here. So, I generate blue clouds. So, here the blue clouds are discriminable, but as soon as I add a blue cloud here and a blue cloud here and a yellow cloud here and a yellow cloud here, you see that uh, the clouds corresponding to these points will tend to overlap with the clouds corresponding to these two points, making it uh, something more continuous like this. So, you see that uh, these two points are still the same just that two more clouds have been added on top of it. Now, if I look at uh, this, so what I am doing in going from 4 PSK to 8 PSK is that I am adding another point here and I am adding another point here. I am adding another point here and I am adding another point here. So, if I add all the clouds corresponding to these points, naturally, I will get something like this which results in something similar to say let me call this figure 1, this is figure 2, this is figure 3 and this is figure 4. So, now you can actually see how I can go from figure 1 to figure 2 to figure 3 to figure 4. So, this. So, this is why adding more points in a constellation is actually increasing the ambiguity. But, uh, so the question is that if adding more points in a constellation results in an increased ambiguity at the receiver then why at all doing it? Adding more points in the constellation results in ambiguity. So, m equals 2 performs very good. Then why do we need to add more and more points to the constellation? So, actually we have not answered this till now. So, the question is that what is the 
significance of this capital M or the number of symbols in constellation. What is the significance of the number of symbols in a constellation? So to answer that, let us look at the PSK constellation. So I will call this A2 as minus 1, 1, A4 as minus 1, minus J, J and 1, A8 as J0, J by M, sorry, J, J 2 pi by M or 2 pi by 8, J, J pi by 4 actually, pi by 4, J pi by 2, J 3 pi by 4, J pi, which is minus 1, J 5 pi by 4, J minus pi by 2, and J minus pi by 4, or this can be J minus 3 pi by 4. So what does this M or what do the, do the symbols in the constellation represent? So let us go to the term digital communications or let us go to the basic idea of the term digital communication systems. So we are transmitting symbols from a or we want to transmit want to transmit bits over a channel but we want to transmit bits over a channel but uh, we want to transmit bits over a physical channel we want to transmit over a physical channel but a physical channel so bits are abstract ideas so uh, the definition of a bit or a logical bit is true or false or the presence or absence bits are abstract ideas but in order to send them over a physical channel we want a physical manifestation of those ideas. We want the physical manifestation of those ideas. So, the simple idea is that, uh, so, the addition of noise we have done already. But anyway, I will add a few more slides. This discussion is taking longer than I had anticipated. So, we want to transmit physical manifestations of these want to transmit physical manifestations of these bits the simplest idea is you would have done this transmit zero when you have a logical zero when there is a logical zero and transmit plus 5 volts when there is a logical one. Transmit zero when there is a logical zero and transmit plus 5 volts when there is a logical one. Simple. Now the question is that uh, this is one physical manifestation. Nothing stops me from using minus 5 volts and plus 5 volts can do that as well or in general minus a and plus a 
I can do that as well. I can say minus 1 and plus 1 volt. I, it can be anything. I can transmit anything and uh, it will still be a physical manifestation of the idea of bits. So now, basically transmit this over one time instant or one channel use transmit this over one time instant or one channel use fine so over so the idea now becomes that over one channel use i transmit either of two symbols to convey one bit of information over one channel use i transmit uh, either of two symbols to convey one bit of information fine but uh, i trans what if instead transmit one out of four symbols what if instead of two symbols i transmit one out of four symbols i can do that then i can convey can convey two bits of information per channel use so if i use m bits per constellation sim or if i transmit in general if i transmit one out of 2 to the power r symbols i can convey r bits per channel use i can convey r bits of information per channel use and this r equals 2 to the power m this sorry m equals to the power r are the number of constellation points and r equals log to the base 2 m is known as the spectral efficiency constellation this is called the spectral efficiency of a constellation and this measures measures how many bits can we send per channel use this measures how many bits can we send per channel or how many bits per channel use can be sent so this is the idea or this is the physical significance of m but then the question is that if we can uh, if by increasing m we can transmit uh, more and more information per channel use then why not uh, make uh, m exceedingly large the answer hits back in the form of this figure that uh, the more you increase m the more will or in PSK for example the more you increase m the more will be the ambiguity in uh, recovering the transmitted symbol so but the more you increase m the greater 
is the ambiguity in recovering a transmitted symbol fine so now this leads us to two more questions one how can we recover a transmitted symbol and two how do we measure this ambiguity how do we measure this ambiguity and a follow up question is there so a follow up question that uh, we can ask qualitatively even without going to quantifying these issues is that if too small an m is wasteful spectral efficiency and too large an m is results in too much ambiguity at the receiver then is there a sweet spot where we can balance the two is there a sweet spot where we can balance the two these are the three questions that we seek to answer and we will continue in the next lecture by answering the first out of these three questions and then we'll move on to the second and the third question so we stop here and uh, we will continue with how to recover a transmitted symbol in the next lecture mm -hmm.